Hi there and welcome. The new version of the basic Ubrick script has just been released, uh, the version 9.0. This uh, version has some amazing new features and functionality, which I want to talk to you about today. Lately, a lot of people uh, have been asking me the question, so let's say if I have already made uh, mock-up data, mock-up data animation, let's say uh, we have an Unreal skeleton, maybe taken from some kind of uh, resources, and people want to adjust uh, this mock-up data, this animation, but for doing so, they need to do something complicated, maybe a lot of extra steps, extra steps, and so on and so forth. To simplify this approach, I have uh, written this script, Vertebra. If you have been using my easy game rig, then you actually you are actually aware about this uh, functionality, about this script. This tool creates and then calculates uh, joint chains for the joint spine hierarchy. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to select the pelvis and then the spine uh, joints. Then press the create and rotate button. It's going to create uh, two additional locators or some additional locators. And next, uh, what do you have to do? You have to orient these locators in a way that uh, um, gray lines actually will be pointing in one direction. Black lines in a different direction, but the same for the black lines and also rotate and orient these locators to approximately match the axis rotation of the um, joints. You don't need to be precise, just something approximate. Because when the script recalculates the data, uh, it's gonna match it uh, better. We press the um, apply and bake button. As a result, if we take a look, we'll see that uh, the spine, a spine animation has been uh, recalculated or rather transferred to these locators. If we want to add the neck, uh, we're going to select the chest locator, then uh, uh, neck and head joints, then continuation mode and create and rotate. And apply and bake. And that's it. And again, this locator is going to be uh, oriented based on the uh, joint orientation, base joint orientation. And you see, you can use this tool uh, as well as a tool for uh, recalculating the inverse kinematics. Let me select a few joints just to demonstrate. You can see that essentially we can get the fully fledged rig uh, that can be used to adjust animation. Let me uh, yeah, select the locator. So let's say you can maybe adjust leg positions, just adjust the animation, so on and so forth. Of course, you can also work, uh, you can use, also use the script not only for the humanoid characters, but for um, animals uh, for quadruped characters. You can see that animation is uh, recalculated, it works, and uh, you can make some adjustments, uh, move it, rotate it, and so on and so forth. Yeah, just torso, legs. All right, the next update to the tool. Uh, if you pay attention, you'll see that some buttons actually got uh, these additional arrows, so to speak. If you right-click this uh, icon, you get some kind of additional menu with uh, some additional functionality. Uh, in this case, specifically for the bake button, if I right-click, you can bake uh, um, in min or max in min max range. It is uh, specifically useful in the situations like this. So uh, most of the users of uh, my basic Rick script uh, mostly work with uh, huge files, huge data. For example, this file, uh, as an example, contains almost um, 7,000 frames. But naturally, people um, actually split this work into several parts, maybe select like 100 frames or so, and adjust this animation little by little. And unfortunately, the previous version of the script baked all the nodes and new locators, so on and so forth, using the entire uh, range of the animation. And naturally, it took a lot of time. But this new functionality allows you to specify a certain range, which is specified by the timeline. So let's say, let me give you an example. Let's uh, say I'm gonna, I want to adjust the uh, arm animation. I'm going to select, I'm uh, going to bake the knot. By the way, if you double click the timeline and uh, select all the keys in the selected range and then press the knot button, it's going to create the knot only for the specified and selected range of uh, frames. But this is kind of old functionality. I'm just, I just wanted to emphasize that it is also possible uh, to work like this. And next, uh, let's say after you made certain sort of adjustments, uh, corrected your animation, maybe you used the animation layer, adjusted the kind of animation, rebake the animation, and so on and so forth, you can 
select the object and then bake using uh, min max range it's going to use the timeline uh, range that you currently have and uh, uh, the animation will remain the same uh, beyond this range so the animation only in this range is going to be is going to be adjusted after that you can delete the locator the uh, baking process is going to be super fast the next button bake source and delete is going to do virtually the same it's going to take the uh, time range and bake uh, it's going to take essentially all the sources all the nodes uh, bake them and then delete them of course saving all the animation that is uh, that exists beyond the specified time range this functionality was introduced intentionally for the people who uh, are working with huge files with huge data next uh, uh, new function or other set of functions it's essentially all this uh, this is uh, uh, functionality for working with the motion trail uh, what does it do specifically so let's say we have this animation by itself uh, uh, this rig is kind of um, heavy and it works rather slowly and when you add the motion trail it works rather inefficiently of course a new version of my hash shield has been improved and works faster but generally, faster but generally speaking it kind of slows down the uh, viewport here as you can see i have created an entire hierarchy of uh, these gymnasts where uh, one person stands on the other person's hand and the other person stands on the previous uh, person's uh, hand and the regular motion trail will not work in this case or rather it will work uh, very slowly so my motion trail uh, works in a way that it creates in the first preset it creates a motion trail from the beginning till the end of the time range the second preset uh, uh, gets a currently selected frame and then creates a motion trail starting from a few frames before the selected frame and then a few frames after the selected frame. I generally prefer this preset because it works with uh, a scene of any size. The main advantage of this motion trail is that it is calculated rather fastly. So let's say if I select anything, I'm going to move it, uh, adjust it, pause it, the motion trail itself is going to be recalculated only when I let go of the left mouse button. So it's going to be recalculated uh, from the current frame. As a result, it doesn't have this uh, horrible, well, I would say, feature of the standard motion trail. When you actually start moving the controller with the motion trail, but then because the scene, uh, because the scene is very uh, heavy, it actually lags, uh, lags like for a couple of seconds, freezes for a couple of seconds. But here it works only when you uh, essentially re released the left mouse uh, button. This is the first main feature of this uh, function. The second one is uh, the shorter this trail, so essentially the fewer frames it uses, the faster it works. So let's say if you have a super ultra heavyweight scene, maybe it's very difficult to work on it, maybe you want to use just short short uh, motion trail for your convenience at least it's going to be somewhat useful compared to the standard motion trail the third advantage of this tool is that it's not calculated while uh, the scene the animation is being played this is uh, an additional advantage that allows uh, this tool to work uh, as fast as it can while not loading the system too much and the fourth advantage is that uh, it generally works so it works uh, far more uh, stably because sometimes uh, regular motion trail just stops working for some reason you know when you when you have to update the motion trail and so on and so forth so generally this tool works uh, much more precisely and much more robustly this motion trail also has presets with different thickness with different size of the dots uh, if let's say maybe you can remove the dots if you don't need them by the way to make it easier to work with the objects that uh, do not have a visible center while applying the motion trail, these objects actually receive uh, temporary, receive uh, this uh, dot, or rather this icon. You can also change the color uh, of these dots. For now, I have only three presets, uh, white, black and yellow. But of course, uh, it can be expanded in the future. Maybe if you prefer working with uh, maybe a uh, darker background scene, you can use uh, the white dots. And right now, unfortunately, you cannot select the motion trail in, in viewport. But of course, you can open the outliner, you can uh, select the motion trail. After that, you can change some properties in this object. Let's say you can uh, um, adjust end and uh, start frame. 
or you can actually right click the empty range button again it's going to give you some additional functions and let's say if you select here the 8 16 and uh, the x button next to empty all uh, it's uh, it's going to delete all the motion trails the next button the asterisk button is uh, essentially display settings let me show you what it does you can uh, change the thickness of the controls let's say i can increase the line weight Sometimes it's very convenient when you have uh, especially uh, thin controllers. Next, you see we have this uh, issues with geometry with the Z5. You can set camera near clip to one, which is essentially going to remove these issues. This is rather easy. You can do it in the perspective camera as well, but uh, it's just a, a very handy shortcut. Next, you can hide and, and show active pivot. So essentially you can select this object. Let's say this control, you can show the active pivot. You see it's going to show you a special object that essentially visualizes the pivot. Uh, sometimes it's useful when you need to visualize the pivot, visualize the center of the object. There is also another function. Let's say you open the scene and you see something like this. Maybe uh, this scene was uh, created using the wrong axis. You can change uh, Z up or Y up axis. Or oh, again, uh, change it to y-axis, so uh, depends on your, on your goals. Another handy feature, handy button, is a pivot button. When you uh, left-click uh, it, it's going to give you a few additional options. Specifically, what kind of pivot you're going to get. As an example, let me uh, select a few controls. And maybe for these purposes, let's uh, possibly select the average mode. As a result, it's going, to, it's going to average out the position of the pivot between the selected controls. And we can rotate the character now this way, which is rather convenient. Next, uh, I can use average but uh, zero vertical. And essentially it's going to be the same as the previous one, but vertically it's not going to change. So it's going to be essentially at the ground level. Next, we can uh, align using the first selected object or the last selected object. In this case, this was the knee, and when it comes to the last selected object, it is going to be the head, because why not? This way, you can adjust the orientation uh, of your character based on a certain pivot, certain position. Or you can just uh, select uh, some kind of mode and then adjust the pivot uh, manually, if, uh, let's say, you need it in a very specific spot. Yeah, you can just uh, move it in any place possible. And maybe rotate the character like this around a certain point. That's it.